all right guys today we are going to be looking at how to prove the gamma function of half so understand that first gamma function is denoted as this is denoted as integral of t raised to the power of x minus 1 then e raised to the power of minus t dt so this is the uh, this is how the gamma function is denoted so now if you want to for the gamma function of half so what you need to do is just replace half with and you replace here anyway you see x you put half so it's going to give us infinity then this one you're going to have to raise the power of half minus one then e raised to the power of minus t dt so which means that the gamma function of half is equal to integral then integral of what half minus one will give you t raised to the power of minus half t then e raised to the power of minus t dt good so now so what you need to do the next thing you need to do is that in order for you to integrate this you need to say let t be equal to u square or whatever you want it to be so but me i'm using u so the next thing is you differentiate t with respect to u so your dt du will be equal to 2u okay so now the next thing you do is that you can call this one equation one so what you do next you are going to insert all these values into equation one so but before that you need to know what your dt is so when you cross multiply you discover that your dt is equal to 2u du so you come back and say that the gamma function of half is equal to the integral of instead of writing t okay we are going to write u square because now that your t is your t is now u square then e raised to the power so e raised to the power so instead of writing minus t again you are going to write minus u square then once plus of writing dt you are going to write 2u du i hope you are getting this okay so the next thing you do is that so here you discover that this two will cancel the denominator here so you are going to have u raised to the power of minus one then e raised to the power of minus u square then 2u du okay so which gives us what as the integral of infinity then this um so this u just u raised to the power of minus one then u raised to the power of one and e raised to the power of minus u square then multiply by two du i hope it's clear so the next thing you do is your gamma function the gamma function is equal to what is equal to the integral of integral of now you are taking the constant out which is the two so you left is what that's minus u u raised to the power of minus one and u raised to the power of one according to indices it's going to give you u raised to the power of zero okay then e raised to the power of minus u square then what du okay so which is going to give you integral to the infinity then you're going to have u raised to the power of zero give you one so you be left with what minus you could leave let it e raised to the power of u square du good so now at this point to further integrate this what you need to do is that you need to make some assumption for example we are going to make two assumptions one of the assumptions are going to say i is equal to let i be equal to integral of infinite integral of e raised to the power of minus so instead of writing you write x square dx now the next assumption is going to say let i be equal to integral of of e raised to the power of minus y square dy to the limit between infinity and zero so next thing you do is you are going to multiply it so your i square now is going to give you infinity e raised to the power of minus uh, x square dx then multiply by integral of e raised to the power of minus y square dy so your i square will now be what will now be the integral sign so you can discover that here now we are having we are already having a multiple integral so multiple integral so this is an example of multiple integral good so your i square will now be integral okay so here what do you do you are going to find the you are going to use indices you know if you're using this you are going to have x square plus y square 
then dx dy okay so you can see that this this go is going okay so let's move on to the let's move to the next thing. what is is this yes we have it to be e raised to the minus x square plus y square the then sorry this is supposed to be dx dy okay so we are going to do next is we are going to make some assumptions so now in a rectangular coordinate your r square is equal to x square plus y square and your da that the area of that rectangle is the same as the length has been which is denoted as dx dy and also for your polar coordinates because we are going to be using polar and rectangle because we are going to convert the in multiple integral we are going to be converting from polar to rectangular rectangular to polar so we want to convert from rectangular to polar so in polar your da is equal to r dr d theta so and the limit the limit is changing from it ranges from pi over 2 to what to 0 so which means that your i square will be equal to infinity and that integral of integral of between between the limit of pi over 2 and 0 and the integral of infinity uh, integral of between infinity and 0 then e raised to the power of now instead of writing your x square plus y square you're going to write r square then instead of writing dx dy which is now your da your da is now in polar coordinates your da is now r dr d theta i hope you understand this now so the next thing you're going to do you are going to integrate this separately so first of all you are going to integrate this one you sorry i'm going to integrate this one okay so i hope you understand so you're going to integrate this one so in integrating this one so what we are going to do is this so e raised power minus r square r dr then d theta okay so what we are going to do is this now we're going to say let w be equals to minus r square if w is equals to minus r square so which means that the w the r will be equals to what minus 2r so and if that should be the case then which means that your the r will be equal to what minus the w over 2 okay so what we are going to have, to have pi square is equal to integral we have our pi over 2 then um, into so we're going to have integral of that's infinity then e raised to the power of writing minus r square, you're going to write w w then multiply by your r yeah then instead of writing dr you're going to write minus the w over 2r so yeah so this r will cancel this r then this two is going out it's going out it's going out so your i square will now be integral of so this is going to be have 1 over 2 so if you okay infinity then so it's minus 2 it's minus 2 minus 1 over 2 sorry then dw so at this point you can integrate and put in your put in your value so i'm taking this one now so if i integrate i'm going to have u is power of minus square Okay, because when you give this e power of w, you give me e raised to the power of the w, then my w is what minus r square. So I'm going to put in my range, my limits. So if I do that, my r square will be is going to give me this, then minus 1 over 2 into e raised power of minus infinity square, then minus e raised power of minus 0 square. Okay, so that means my i square. Will be what so that's multiplied by minus one over two so this will give me zero and this will automatically give me minus one so which is okay so i'm having here I'm having 
Oh sorry, our DR. Okay. Our DR we see our digita, sorry. Our digita is so okay. So we're going to have um that is minus times minus give you plus. So we are going to have half then the theta. So what do you do? So you know the half is a constant, so you take it out. So the next thing you do is that you are going to integrate your d theta. So and in integrating your d theta, if you integrate your d theta, you are going to have theta then into this pi over two then to the power of zero to the between zero okay then into so my square so my high square is now if you integrate so theta the raised to the power of pi over two then zero not raised to the power sorry the range or the limit so we have one over two then into so i'm going to put in my my boundaries to so pi over two then minus zero so when i'm going to have, i'm going to have pi over four yeah that's what i'm going to have okay so which means that my i square is equals to pi over four so then if you take the square root of both sides then my i will now be square root of pi over 4 so which is what square root of pi n over 2 okay so now what do we do at this point so at this point it's called our i is square root of but then don't forget that from the beginning we know we're seeing that the gamma function of half is equal to what we prove is one say is equal to 2 integral of what of e raised to the power of minus u square the what we have d u that's what we we'll prove it to so now at this point you remember that we we'll let this one to be i so and we're getting our i to be pi over 2 so we cannot see that gamma function of 1 over 2 is equals to 2 multiplied by square root of what of pi over 2 so these two cancel these two then we are going to have 1 over 2 is equals to square root of what of pi so we have successfully proved that the gamma function of half is equal to square root of pi thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video or this video has added value to you i want you to like to share this video and also subscribe